Hello, I'm Cecilia Louie of Paper Zen. I have a challenge for you, if you choose to accept it. I challenge you to practice your quilling curves a few minutes a day for seven days. If you've watched any of my other videos and see how I tame my paper to follow curves and want to do the same, then this challenge is for you. After making these curves, your fingers are going to learn the correct tension needed for all these arcs. At the end of the seven days, you'll be able to compare how you did on day one to day seven and see how you've improved. You can even challenge other quillas you know and try practicing them together. Now for this challenge, you're welcome to use whatever supplies that you happen to have on hand. It's actually good to try different kinds of weights, different kinds of widths. I'm going to be using Kent's and Meton paper, which is a little bit thicker than conventional quilling paper. And it's good for your fingers to get to know different thicknesses because some thicker sheets like this will require different um, tension as you're curving. Now to prepare your strips, I tend to use a ruler and we're just going to measure two inches of length. And the way I do that is I just line up the end of my strip on the two inch mark and then crimp right there on the edge, move it down, and crimp. When I get to the end, I just take my scissors and snip along those edges. Now for whatever tool that you want to use, you go right ahead and use whatever you prefer. I actually tend to like doing softer open curves like this with a crochet hook, but really you can do it with both, okay? Okay, let's start with the first shape. That would be the C curve using the softening technique. Now what do I mean by softening? So I'm just going to put the strip of paper between my finger and my tool and just draw with a bit of friction between those two. And you can see what happens is the area where I've held onto it is straight and there's a bit of curve. So I'm going to turn it around and do the same thing on the other side. And I can set it down and I see, oh, I've put a bit too much pressure on there. That's okay. Paper is very forgiving, and all I did need to do now is just gently run my fingers across that and help smooth it out. And maybe just a little bit more. And there we've matched our curve. So now the next one is still the C curve, and we're going to do what I call scraping. And scraping is the same as softening, just a little bit harder. So I'm going to apply a bit more friction as I come across that strip. Turn it around and apply the same amount of friction to achieve that curve. Now for the rubbing technique, it's similar to these guys, but I'm just going to soften my strip at first, and then I'm going to put the middle of the strip in the fleshy part of my finger and rub back and forth right there. And as you see, when I rub back and forth, watch how these two ends come closer together. So that's really indenting quite a bit of pressure right in that spot. And maybe just a bit too much, so it's not a big deal. We'll just widen that out a little bit. And that's a pretty darn good match. Now for the S curve, similar to the C curve, but you'll see after I've softened one side, now I'm going to flip this way to create the S curve. Then for the scraping, same thing, we're just doing a little bit more pressure. And a lot of times, oh, so obviously because of this softening, I need to actually do a little bit more friction. So sometimes I'll come back right around that area and just, you know, run it back and forth like that and it'll accentuate right there. Then this this is actually the same flipped, so you know it doesn't matter which way you put it back down, it's still gonna be the same. So I'm just gonna run my tool a little bit more. I'm scraping. You can hear the pressure that I'm giving on the sheet of paper right there. And that's pretty close. So maybe just a little bit more there. And that's pretty much there. Now for the rubbing of the S-curve. So I'm just going to soften my strip 
I just find I like to work with pulp that's pre-softened. That's just something I do. So if you can imagine, I'm just going to imagine this strip in half and then in half again. So I need to basically rub right there. And then I'm going to put it on my template and see how does it come close to what I'm looking for and adjust from there. There's a lot of adjusting, a lot of adjusting. So now I can work on the opposite side. So let your eyeball get used to the distance that you use for the other side and come back in there. And folks, remember, this is just a little practice worksheet. There's no need to match these shapes 100%. They're just some simple line drawings, but it's more to train your eye and your hands to get to know different shapes and arcs. And the more you do it, then the more your fingers and your eyes will become accustomed to giving what you want. So we're getting there. This is by far the hardest of all the shapes. Just realize that this adjusting back and forth, that's normal, that's what I do, that's how long it takes. I made this tutorial because my friend said I make this look easier than it is for her. So I thought it over and I'm trying to break down my steps further for you. So if you have any other questions, please comment below and it'll help me think of new ideas for future tutorials. It just takes a bit of practice going back and forth and quillers, come on, we're known for our patience, right? So have patience with yourself as you're doing this challenge. To glue your shapes, dip your strip into a smeared puddle of glue. When I place it on my challenge sheet, see how I start with my left hand? My left hand guides and presses down on the strip while my right hand keeps the strip in the air. Apply a gentle pressure to make sure the strip has good adhesion and then work your way towards the right. Or if you're left-handed, the other way around. If you're curious why I smear my glue puddle, watch my other video called Quilling Glue Basics, Five Helpful Tips. I'll leave a link in the notes below. After you've practiced for seven days, compare day one to day seven and see how you've improved. Be kind to yourself and only compare yourself to you, not to anyone else. I've been doing this since 2006, so it's not fair to compare yourself to me or anyone else. If you like this tutorial, you can support me by hitting the like button or comment below. It's because of your feedback that I'm inspired to make new videos. If you want to be the first to watch my latest tutorials, hit the subscribe button and then the bell icon. 